Okay, so here we're looking at the vegetative growth cycle of cannabis. Keep in mind that vegetative state is focusing mainly on the leaves here and not ultimately producing any flowers, but producing a plant with good structure and that can carry itself well into the flowering stage, which follows the vegetative state. So first off, vegetative growth of cannabis, excluding rudalis, if it receives 16 plus hours of a continuous light, it'll remain in the vegetative growth phase. Ideally, the more light the plant receives, the greater the growth will be. And this is, again, to some extent because there can be burning that occurs. For example, if we look at uh, nature, ferns grow below tall trees, and these ferns need diffused and reduced light, so they're best suited for that. The trees, however, they're growing taller and stretching so that they're able to capture more of the light with their leaves. Now, growing leaves, we're going to our cannabis leaves here. Uh, the goal is to provide not only quality leaves, but also quality structure to the plant. This is setting the plant up for the flowering stage which is going to uh, come after this vegetative state. It's going to be considered one of the most important phases of a life cycle uh, because you can determine the yield in the end. So even though there's no flowers produced, if you treat plants poorly or set them up poorly in the vegetative state, they will have poor flower production because they're not um, well-tuned or prepared well to go under the stresses of producing flowers. So this is why this is often considered one of the most important phases, even though it is not producing any end flowers. Now, in order to maintain uh, these 16 uh, plus or 18 plus hours of light, you need to have a quality timer. You need to keep it in the vegetative growth phase as long as you see desirable. This is where timers become important. And if you're looking at a timer and you set it to 16, 18 hours of light and you keep it at that phase, you don't change it, uh, your plants will continue to grow under the vegetative growth phase of the life cycle. As soon as you go through and flip the timers, um, that can cause them to go into flower. Or if you have a timer that malfunctions, that's something we need to keep an eye on because that can also cause them to go into flower prematurely. Uh, flowering during the vegetative cycle, so under normal growing conditions, after about four to six or so weeks of vegetative growth, plants will start to exhibit something called pre-flowers. If it's a male plant, it will produce flowers sooner than a female plant. This is what the male flowers look like. These are the ones that you want to cull uh, sooner to prevent any potential unwanted cross-pollination with a female. This is what a female pre-flower will look like right here. So when we're looking at the vegetative state, yes, we're looking at plant structure. Yes, we're looking at leaves. But there will be the, the initial form of flowers developing. And these are pre-flowers. These are not mature in any way. These are showing you, though, or demonstrating the gender of the plant that you're looking at. And you'll have either have female flowers, pre-female flowers, or pre-male flowers. As I said, the male flowers typically show up sooner because they're looking to produce pollen to pollinate the female. Vegetative to flowering switch. Once pre-flowers are observed, changing the plant's photo period to an even 12 hours of light and 12 hours of dark will induce the flowering stage. If you keep them under there, hopefully they'll uh, continue to grow and expand a little bit during the flowering stage and get the buds that you desire. Uh, keep in mind that uh, flipping these plants uh, is advised after you start to see the pre-flowers. It's kind of like your indication that those plants can make the switch over to the flowering room.